Okay. Welcome to our team call for December 19th. I cannot believe the end of the year is so close. Anybody else? I feel like this year just friggin' flew by faster than any other year. Um, but I'm going to skip over our typical um, housekeeping. We're going to be talking about the things like the pop-up sale and um, the Transform 20 group and also an update on the Secret Santa thing um, that we've been discussing tomorrow because I want to make sure that Kelsey has plenty of time and I want to make sure that there's time for questions at the end because I know there will be some um, and also just because it's holiday week and everybody has a lot of busy going on so we're gonna try to stay on point tonight um, I reached out to Kelsey because I'm just so in awe <laughs> um, of so much that you do but she is probably the most organized person that I know that just totally, again, blows my mind because it is not how my brain works. Um, but she is going to talk to us all tonight about goal setting and really planning for your 2019, which going into the new year with a game plan is absolutely critical to what is going to happen and transpire in the next year. So I felt like this would be an amazing way to kind of end the year and cap off this call with. Kelsey dropping some knowledge bomb on what she does for herself and her own business. Um, and maybe a little bit, with I don't know if you're talking about that at all. Um, but super excited to have you here and thanks for taking the time because I know you're doing No, program's over. Let me make sure everybody's muted. Wait. Okay, I think you got it. I think you did it. Hi, guys. Um, I don't know if you, I've, I've seen so many new faces on here. It's so cool. Last time I spoke on your guys' call, I was like, I don't even, like, I, it's, it's been a while. So, hi, everybody. Um, happy holiday week. Merry Christmas to everybody and happy early new year. I'm super honored and excited to be here. Um, your team, just like Dana said, has always really, truly inspired me, too. You guys have some of the biggest hearts that I've ever seen um, when it comes to just, you know, the community vibe and everything I just have always really admired from your team so I am honored to be here and speak tonight and this is a subject that I am super passionate on and you guys are the first to hear it from me because um, Dana it was funny because I think I put up a poll on my Instagram story and I was like who wants to know how I goal set and immediately I get a DM and Dana's like hi will you speak on my team call and I was like absolutely um, and this is something that um, I am a broken record about this time of year I 100% believe that goal setting and knowing what you're going after is the most important thing you can do. Um, not just at the end of 20, at the end of your year, but in all honesty, I, I do this before every quarter of our of Beachbody business because I think that sitting down and pushing for what I want and knowing what I want is vital. And if you have zero idea, and I'll tell you this brutally honestly right now, and if you guys have seen me before, you guys know that I'm a very tough love coach. I kind of just say how it is. But um, if you go into this new year without a game plan, you are just, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to have no clue what's going on. Um, you're going to be spending another 12 months thinking that success club is how you're going to become a millionaire. You're going to spend another 12 months not recruiting another coach. You're going to spend another 12 months, you know, sitting there and looking at these 10 goals that you were done a piece of paper and wondering why you didn't achieve any of them. And this is why I'm so strongly passionate about this, um, not just for myself, but helping my team do this. My team and I started, I started really pushing this out to my team at the beginning of December, um, having them starting to think about it. And I'm going to basically go through the top steps that I would tell anybody and that I personally do to get myself ready for every year and every quarter. Um, and I don't know if you guys have read the book, The 12 Week Year. But it is by far my favorite book, and it is how I run my goal setting stuff. Um, and if you haven't read that book, please just like I would just say go buy it like tonight on Amazon. Um, listen to it. The guy on the Audible is horrible sounding, so I definitely don't recommend getting the Audible. He's like so like every time I like I hear him, I'm like, where is this guy from? It's like it's horrible. Um, lesson learned to always like listen to the preview before you buy something because it's like, I, I listen to it, but I'm just like, oh my God. Um, it's still good. It's just, you know, um, but please buy this book. I, I swear by it. I live by it. It is how I run my team accountability. It is how I set goals. It is how I plan. 
And it's funny because like everybody always asks me to come on. They're like, Kelsey's so organized. And it's so funny that people say that because I'm like, I am so organized in my business. In turn, my life is chaos. <laughs> like my house is always a mess. And like people always think that my, like I have it all together, but I swear to God, like my business is the only thing in my life that is organized. So with that being said, I'm going to dive in. Um, I'm going to save questions for the end. So if you have them, go ahead and post as I'm talking. Um, but I, I'm so easy. I'm like squirrel brain. So if I see something, I will start going off on something else. So once I start this, I will keep going. Um, but I'm more than happy. Yeah. Real quick, I just wanted to say before you get started, because I don't want to scroll bring you then, um, I announced your accolades and all that when I introduced you in the team page for the call. But if you would just like a three minute recap of where you started, why you started, where you're at now, because yeah. I oh yeah, really um, powerful um, to show the goals you've already achieved and getting where you are and why you have the mindset you have. You're so smart. I should have definitely started with that. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I didn't exactly <laughs> encourage it in the beginning. Like I shouldn't have. So, so I, no, no, I, I should, I should have started that because it's funny because my goals that I'm am setting now and I actually, in my examples that you see, I did not even include my own goals. I'm going to tell you guys them because I was like, they're going to look at those and be like, what the hell is she pushing for? Um, but it's crazy. I do look back on my first ever 12 week year to see the things that I was pushing for at the beginning to what I'm pushing for now. And it's, it's insane. And I'll talk about that in a second, but anywho, I started back in 2014. So I am back from the good old DVD days <laughs> where you had to buy a DVD set for every single purchase that you made. And I crack up because I go upstairs and I look in my closet and I'm like, holy crap, there's like a thousand dollars worth of programs in here. And we get bought for $99 like I can't, I can't even wrap my head around it. Um, but yeah, I started back in 2014. I was a full-time news reporter and, um, I didn't start this to, um, build a business at the beginning. I honestly just wanted my shakes, um, 25% off. And that was the only way that I was gonna be able to do it. But the moment that my coach was like, there's a business opportunity attached to it. I was kind of like, why the heck not? Like, I'll just try it. So, um, I, it took me about like two hours maybe before I realized that I wanted to like actually try to build this thing. It was really quick and I was all in from day one. Um, but I really had a rocky start. Like I was the girl that I didn't sit down and set goals to be honest at the beginning. Um, I was told to hit success club to be successful. I was told that I needed to hit Emerald. So I did that. I was told to hit diamond. So I did that. Um, I went, I hit diamond. I, I signed up in April and it took me about six months to hit diamond. So it took me a while. Um, and then after that, um, I was basing everything else off of rank. If I'm being honest with you, I really didn't know what else there was. I didn't know what this business could give to me. So all I was doing was chasing shiny accolades and always coming up short. Um, I was told once I got to diamond, okay, get to one star. Get to two stars. So you can go to New Leader Conference. And it was all of 2015 that I was falling in and out of diamond and I was unstable and I was accomplishing nothing. And the money that I was making was coming from commissions and I wasn't growing a team and I was kind of staying stagnant. But toward the end of 20, in the middle of 2015, I'd had all of a sudden this, it clicked to me that I had my first goal and it was that I hated my job and I wanted out. And I had to figure a way to do that. And I was like, well, this is the only thing I got right now. So I might as well try it. And all through 2015, I compared myself to everybody else around me and I was unstable and I finished December almost blowing it for my coach being the diamond that almost fell out of diamond while she was in her last week of elite qualifications. And I remember saying to myself after that, I was like, I will never let this happen again. And so this was the first time that I sat down going into 2016 with a big goal. And I was a very unstable, shaky diamond coach. And um, my, the girl that was basically holding me on to diamond, I had to call her and beg her to just buy a performance sampler pack to stay active so that Natalie wouldn't lose elite. Um, and I just was like, okay, what are you gonna do about this? You know, Are you gonna go through another year like this? Or are you gonna, are you gonna do something about it? So on January 1, um, the girl quit, submitted her cancellation form, and I had to find a way. And I told myself that day that I was going to be an elite coach that year. And it sounds so funny to say that now, but I did. I went five-star elite from January to December and um, locked it in the very last Thursday of December of 2016. And how I 
I did that in the show with you today because I was super clear and intentional with what I was doing. Um, every, I knew what I wanted. I was 100% all in and I went after it. So with that being said, and before I even get into this, I'm this actually glad right that you now. brought this up. Um, I can't deal with being in this call right um, so the big thing that, um, I'm glad that um, the reason I'm glad that you brought this up is because, you know, I, I want you guys to understand that you have to, to make things happen in your business. And first off, this, this is so much more than rank. And I hope you guys know that by now. It's so much more than all that fancy recognition stuff that we, we hear about all the time. And that stuff is important and it's important to go for it, but once I started setting goals for my life outside of this business, I really started to work this business. And elite for me in 2016 and building an elite team for me that year was I had to prove my, to myself that I could make this a full-time business and that I didn't have to go back to work. Because when I quit on January 8th, 2016, my husband, it was like, literally, I have an unstable diamond, guys. And I literally was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to quit. So I quit my job. And I, my husband told me on that day, he was like, Kelsey, you have to, you have, um, until he's like, I'm, I love you. I support you. That's like all good conversations start. But um, in March, if you don't match what you were making, like you got to go back to work. And that was pretty much all I needed to hear. So what happened? I sat down and I planned it out. I figured out what I needed to do. And I was standing on the cruise ship <laughs> of the beach, the SS Beachbody in 2016. And I checked my paycheck that day and what I made in the past, those two weeks matched what I made as a reporter every two weeks. And so I did it and I was proud of myself and I was like, now what? And that's how my brain has always worked is that I will go for something and then I'll ask myself, now what? Now what can I go for? Now what's different? And all of a sudden my headspace completely changed from going from you know, I need to hit five star because it's cool to get one of those. It is cool to get one of those, but I need to get, but it's so cool. That's why I'm pushing for elite. No, it's not why, but cause now it's so much more than that. You know, I push for these certain things. And when I set goals for myself, they are very intentional to get my life to where it's going to, where I want it to go. So with that being said, I will now transition into goal setting. Um, Okay, so the first step that I always do every year is I reflect on the fall, the previous year. So I really encourage you guys to take out a sheet of paper, and I will give this um, PowerPoint to Dana too, so she can share with anybody else in the team. Um, the first thing I encourage you to do, and I do this every single year, is take out a sheet of paper and answer these questions honestly. Um, what did I achieve in 2018, and why did I achieve it? Get real with yourself. Look back at what the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year, and say and cross things off. And I basically did this um, the beginning of last month and I printed off my 2018 goals and there was a lot, there was some things that I achieved and a lot that I did not. And the real, the first thing you guys want to ask yourself is why did you achieve those things? That's number two is why did you, what did you not achieve and why did you not achieve it? And I'm going to give you a little heads up on it. You're going to notice that the things you achieved were the things that you put your heart and soul into. They were the things that you sacrificed for. They were the things that you woke up early for, the things that you stayed up late for. All of those things are going to be what you achieve. The things that you did not achieve were the things that you thought were flashy and fun and what you should be pushing for, but you weren't willing to make the sacrifices for it. You weren't willing to, if you put down Superstar Diamond and you weren't really ready to go out there and recruit 20 coaches a month to try to, you know, get that one diamond, um, you have to be honest with yourself. And the whole point of this is for you to be extremely, extremely honest because this is going to help you set your goals for the following year. The next thing you want to ask yourself is what did I do well in 2018? So celebrate yourself. What, how did you grow? You know, how did, what did you do last year that made you who you are today? Cause I believe it or not guys, every single one of you has something to celebrate from January 1st to 20 to the end of the year. And you need to look back on those things because it gets, it's sometimes it's super easy to get cl it clouded where it's like, well, I was going to, I said I was going to go elite this year and I missed it again. Or I said I was going to go be going to NLC and I missed it again. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it does. And you now know after doing number two, why you didn't do it. So talk about what you did do. Talk about what you did well, how you grew. And then the number, number five is my favorite question ever. 
did my actions in 2018 match the goals I set for myself? And that is super huge. When I said I was going to go for 10 star diamond, were the, did the actions that I did every day, did I show up doing what I needed to do to be a 10 star diamond coach? Did I know those things? Did I reach out to the people that would help me get there? You know, those, that's important. And like, again, be honest. And then last but not least, what did I learn in 2018 that's going to benefit me in the new year? So how, what did I learn last year that's going to make me better? So for instance, for me, an example for this was I had a really awesome financial year. It was a record breaking one for me. I was super proud of myself for it. But what I learned from that situation was I, I'm actually leaving this year pretty pissed off at myself because I'm the only one that saw it. And I'm looking through my downline and I'm hearing back from my team and I'm saying, why aren't they doing it? And why aren't they making money? And why aren't they seeing these life-changing results that I'm seeing? So what I learned from 2018 that's going to benefit me in the new year is that my entire focus for 2019 is going to be on leadership and it's going to be helping my team. So hopefully that shows, shows an example is that like you did stuff this year that's going to benefit you in the new year and it's going to change your focus and it's going to change the way you view things. Step number two, after you've answered all of these questions and you've, and you've wrote down and you're like, okay, I've assessed 2018. I know what I did. I know what I didn't do. And now I'm ready to move forward. I encourage you guys to brain dump. And this is not like, I'm talking, this is going to be trick chicken scratch. This is not something that's like formal and pretty writing. This is like, and you, this is actually, you, you can click on this whenever I give you guys the, um, PowerPoint and you can print this. This is what you're seeing here. This is what I give to my team. Um, there's four categories on the sheet. So what you would want to do is you want to print this off and brain dump into the category. And you want to just be crazy with this. What do you want to achieve in 2019 physically, financially, personally, and in your business? And the reason that I put all of these down here is because guys, you are more than beach body. You are more than rank. You are more than all these things. And if you don't know what you're pushing for outside of Beachbody, you will not show up for Beachbody. <laughs> and that is like a God honest truth. You know, I don't, you know, push to hit success club. Uh, obviously I want to help people, but I'm trying to think of a better example of that one. But I'm just saying like, I don't show, I don't show up every day just because I'm like, man, so this is really freaking awesome 24 seven, whatever. I don't send 50 invites just because I feel like it. I send the 50 invites because I have a lot of goals for myself outside of this. I have debt that I want to pay off. I have a house that I am trying to make sure that I don't get kicked out of. Right? So there's all these things that you want to make sure that you're extremely clear on. So I asked my coaches and like, this is exactly the process I put my coaches through just so you guys know too. So this is all about duplication. Um, financially, what do you want to achieve? Do you want to pay off debt? Do you want to buy, do you want to pay, um, like 10 grand off of your car? What do you want? Do I, what's your financial goal in Beachbody? Um, how many credit cards do you want to pay off physically? Do you want to go all in for transform 20? Do you want to lose 10 pounds? Do you want to wear this pair of jeans that you've been staring at in your closet for a long time? Do you, you want to have a really awesome postpartum journey, whatever it is, write it down personal. Like on my personal, I have buy a smart bridge. Like that's how crazy it is. I write down everything that I want to achieve. Um, travel. I have like travel to three new States. I have, um, weekly date nights with my husband, things like that. What's in your personal life that you want to achieve. And then that bottom category is where we talk business. That's where you can put in two star diamond. That's where you can put in $20,000 in earnings this year. That's where you can put in um, help three coaches on my team achieve premier or elite next year. That's where you talk business. But the thing is, is like, I want you guys to look at this sheet and I have it, I designed it the way that it is because Beachbody is a part of your life. It is not your whole life. And you need to know what you want out of all aspects of your life in 2019, or it's going to be super hard. You won't show up for your business to get yourself closer to it. All right. Step number three is creating the vision. So now that you have your brain dump paper, now you can have that as a reference in front of you and answer these questions. And what I do for those of you that want to duplicate this to your team is I put this into a Google form and I have my team fill it out. Um, and then I get them and I, so that way I have access to them also. 
Um, but the number one thing that I always ask and that I first do in my business is I always say, what is the word that I'm going to live by in 2019? And this is the word that I tell my team to put everywhere, all over their houses, look at it all the time, make it the background of your phone, because it's always going to remind you what you're doing and why you're fighting in 2019. So for mine, for instance, and I always ask why, and I'm going to share mine as I'm going through this so you guys can kind of see how I, I did it. Please just like as I go through my laminated binder. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, my 2019 word was release. And it's going to be all over my house. And the reason that I chose it was because I need, I have such a need to constantly control everything. And because of that, I find myself let down, stressed, overwhelmed, unhappy, and disappointed. I take things personally and I hold it on for days and weeks and months to the point it paralyzes me. I need to release control. I need to release that control as well as all the things that are not good for me this year and trust that I'm not only doing, and that I'm doing everything that I can. I will release people, things, emotions, and obstacles that are not good for me. So as you guys can see, I got super specific on what my word was and why I chose that word. And that is like something that's been weighing on my heart all year long. And I got that from what I learned from 2018 and I learned about myself. So that's my word this year. Um, number two, what kind of impact do you want to make next year? So not just like, what do you want to do? Like, what kind of impact do you want to make? For me, my impact is my entire focus for 2019 is to help as many people around me become as possible become better. That is the impact that I want to make. Any single person that I interact with, I want to leave them with the chance, with the opportunity to be better. And that's my family, that's my husband, that's my friend, my team, my clients. And I just decided to not set the crazy high superstar goal this year or chase shiny things because I don't want it to be about recognition. I want it to be about everyone else. And if all that stuff happens, great, that'd be really cool if we did that together as a team. But I don't want it because of me. I want it because of them. So again, I was very clear on what kind of impact I wanted to make. The next question is, what do you want to celebrate, life and business? So the beauty of it is it's instead of saying, like, this is what I want to achieve, um, I'm all about celebrating when you achieve things, and I'm so bad at it, which is why I, I use this question. Um, I'm the kind of person, like I said, I achieve something and then I say, now what? Instead of actually sitting back and being like, oh, look what you just did, you know? Um, so I asked my team and I do this myself, what do I want to celebrate this year? And this is basically what you wrote on your brain dump paper. Um, so how, like based for mine, I'll pay off my Perkins and Sally May loan. I will celebrate um, having $10,000 in savings. I will celebrate being able to tithe weekly at church. I will celebrate all of my trips this year being paid for in cash et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And like, I talk like it's already happened. So that's the biggest thing to know about that one is to say it like it's happened. I will, or I, I started a podcast and it's on iTunes. I purchased a smart fridge <laughs> telling you that's one of my goals. Like I'm excited about it. Um, I traveled to three new States. I helped 10 coaches in my organization rank advanced to two to five star diamond, you know, so things like that. And I talk about it like it's already happened. Number five, and I think this is the one that, that really means the most to me is, what is the story about 2019 you're gonna tell your family in the future? Are you gonna tell them that it was just another year that you didn't move or advance again? Or are you ready to tell them a, a different story? For me, it was, um, this is the year that I put you first. This is when I realized life was so much more than working 10 hours a day. I worked smarter, not harder. This is when I gave my team everything they needed to succeed and more and when I created leaders of leaders. This is when we made a massive dent into our debt and we began to live life like we were supposed to. It's like writing a letter to my family and it's like my promise to them. And so now this is not just about me, it's about my family. It's about the people that are close to me. Um, number, oh, I missed six clearly. But number six should have been, um, why will this year be different? Um, and so, that's where you're going to go back to those questions you answered in 2018 after your reflection and say, okay, why am I going to do things differently this year? Why am I finally, gonna, why will this finally be the year that I get past diamond? Why will this finally be the year that I make 30 K and then answer that question honestly. And last but not least, um, there's two questions. I'll tell you this one, but I put this one on there first, but um, what do you want your team to accomplish in 2019? So you guys are all, you guys all have your own teams. Maybe you don't even have a single person signed up yet. But don't like take that question lightly. What will your team accomplish in 2019? And share that, like share it from your heart. Like, what do you want? 
Because once you're clear on that, even if you have zero coaches enrolled underneath of you, if you say you want to be a premier team, guess what you're going to start to do, guys? You're going to start trying to figure out the ways to make a premier team, which is going to be the way to, you know, go out and find coaches. Um, for me, I said, I want my team to be four-time elite. I want to have 10 new diamond coaches, 10 new star diamond coaches, 20 success starters, five to 10 elite teams in our organization, five to 10 coaches making 25 to 30K. And my big goal is all together, we make more than $500,000. That was what I wanted my team to achieve in 2019. And then if you have a team, what I also encourage you to ask your team is what you want your whole team to accomplish in 2019. So I asked my coaches what they would like to see our team accomplish also. And those questions are also, those answers are usually pretty telling because you'll see what they, what they want to go for. All right, next. So after you've, excuse me. Okay. After you um, have evaluated 2018, you've brain dumped, you now know what you're pushing for in 2019. This is what I do. Okay, so this is not, this is not the right way, the only way. This is how I do things. Instead of pointing at it and being like, I wanna make $100,000 this year, I break things up. I am a quarterly goal type of person. So this is how I break this down, and if you wanna do it this way, I'm pulling this from one of my coaches. I got her permission to share her goals for 2019. She's the only one that submitted hers so far, um, just because mine are crazy. Um, and they're not as relatable as these ones would be for you guys. Um, but the first thing that you're, again, buy the book, the 12 week year, please just read it. Um, and all this that I'm saying is going to make a lot more sense to you. Um, but number one, you're only going to pick three goals to focus on in quarter one. So yes, you just wrote out that whole vision and yes, you just gave yourself like 700 goals. Um, but you only want three and the only role is that they have to align with your overall vision and get you closer to that life. So you pick three things that will get you closer to that overall vision. So Stephanie, her three goals were to pay off 2,500 in credit card debt, to be a one-star diamond coach, and she put some bullet points underneath of it. Um, Jack's account, her husband's account to em our diamond, advancing four new emeralds, two under Jack, two under her, having team builder finish on the road to elite. And then her last one was having $2,000 in joint savings account. So she gave me her three goals. Now, what she does after that, number two, under each goal, write out the tactics that are going to make the goal a reality within 12 weeks. And the goal of this is to be as detailed as possible. The only thing that you need to make sure of is that tactics are something you can control. So when I say that, I'm saying like, don't write down, help Jessica become an Emerald coach because you can't control that. <laughs> you can't make Jessica an Emerald coach. But what you can do, is mentor Jessica by doing A, B, C, and D. Reach out to Jessica once a week to check in and see how she's doing. Um, invite 12, 20 people a week, blah, 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 blah. Run an Emerald in 24 hours call. You know what I think? You guys understand what I'm saying there? Like, you, I can't just write down, make Dana an Emerald coach because that's literally not something I can control. That is not my, not my thing. That's not my realm. But what I can do is I can put down the things that are gonna help make her an Emerald coach. Um, so anyways, you can see here, her first goal, paying off $2,500 in credit card debt. Um, entirety of Bank of America car, monthly minimums on Chase. You can literally see what she has planned to set to pay every week to make that happen. Like, I think this is so freaking genius. Like the 12 week year is awesome. And like mine is actually very similar. So my goal was to pay off a higher number of credit card debt, but my tactics look so similar to that. It's like, okay, I know where my money's going every single week to make this a reality. Now, to give you a business one, so this is her having team builder finished. I want you guys to look at how specific she is on what she needs to be doing every single, how to make this team builder finished by the end of this quarter. She knows, and you guys, if you guys haven't seen the Road to Elite Packet, I'm assuming Dana showed you guys this, um, if you haven't, obviously reach out to me about it. Um, but the Road to Elite packet, like it tells you what you need to do to reach Team Builder, which is being an Emerald Coach, have a thousand TV, diamond for six weeks, and twenty-five leadership points. So she can easily say that. But look how detailed this is. So em advance two emeralds in my account. Work closely with Deborah and Marissa, who are pushing for their first advancement. 
had three to five new coaches to the team per month, 31, in, and so she breaks it down even farther, 31 invites at least five days a week, two of those days must just be to coaching. At least one coach becomes a success starter. So actually, now that I'm looking at that, she needs to have more tactics under that to make it more specific. Um, 25 leadership points, success club in my account, level up in Jack's account, and return to my account. So you guys, basically, just, I'm not going to go through every single line, but you can see how strategic she is. Success Club 10 is estimated one point a month in APV until retention kicks in. Take advantage of Energized Fruit Punch launch and 21 day fix relaunch in March to spike volume. Do you guys see how detailed this is? Like on what she's focused on every single, like what she, how she's gonna do. So number the next one, help two to three 2018, 2019 coaches lock in Success Club monthly. This will approximately give me 12 to 18 leadership points. And I will say this guys, like she had, she sent this to me and I tweaked it. Like, and I do that for all my coaches. So I'm sure like ask people for help on this too. Um, but anyways, you guys can see right here, like how detailed these, these should be. And mine's the same thing. Like I have mine right in front of me. Also, if you can see me in my little box, um, all of my stuff is outlined the same way for what I'm trying to achieve. Um, down to my credit card debt, down to what I want to save, down to what I'm trying to accomplish in my business. Um, once your 12-week plan is set, you know exactly what you need to be doing to get to your goal. And the cool thing is, is you'll work hard because you only have 12 weeks to make it happen. Um, so from here, you're going to open it up every week, every Sunday, and you're going to write out what you need to be doing that week to keep you on track. So guys, you just did all the hard work. You, ha you know what you need to do. And now you just basically, so now from here, now that I have my plan, what I'll do is I'll go into my planner in the first week of the month and I'll say, okay, I need to pay $500 on X and I need to invite this many people, blah, 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 and then save um, $150 on this date. That's literally all I need to do, right? So like that's how specific it is. And then on Sunday, it's what I encourage you guys to do. This is also from the 12 week year is to give yourself a score on one to 10 and journal about how you did that week. What do you need to change? You know, what do you need to revamp in your 12 week year? Um, if you, it's okay, like, and I think that's the thing is like, it's okay if you didn't do it all. You just ha you have the next week to make up for it. You work extra hard if you had a crappy week. Um, and last but not least, I really highly recommend getting an accountability partner and holding weekly accountability meetings. He calls these whams to check in on each other and see how they're doing. My team does this. Um, they partner up in pairs of three to four and they meet every week and they give themselves a score on the previous week. They talked about what they did, what they need, what they're needing help with. And they meet all the time. Like instead of doing one-on-one -on -one calls, that's how I do my calls with my PS coaches is that they're weekly accountability meetings. And I know what they're pushing for. And last but not least, you're going to create a vaction board and I don't call it a vision board. I call it a vaction board. The vision plus action board. And this is mine from last year. Not much of it happened, <laughs> but I'm just going to say, um, the thing is, and the reason that I call them a action board is because you can put the shiny car on there all you want, but if you don't tell me how you're getting it, have fun staring at that tiny little picture for the rest of your life. Okay. Because that's, you're not going to put something on a board and it's going to miraculously show up in your driveway. Um, the big thing that you guys want to just kind of keep in mind is that the way your, your, your action part of it is in your 12 week year. It's knowing what you're doing to get yourself closer to those goals. So if it's not in your plan and it's not in your vision, then it doesn't go on your board. And I think, I know you guys have probably done vision boards before, but I just hope to give you guys a new like perspective when you create yours for 2019. And actually like mine is not um, how I would create mine now. Um, I will be going through and, and changing mine based off of my vision, but Again, as you look at, at this one, this at the beginning of 2018, um, I was shooting for a lot of shiny stuff, you know, and mine does not look like that for next year. It is all about like, giving it to other people and helping other people, you know, achieve a lot of things. So you create the vision board, but then you have to have some action and a plan behind it. So that is my go-to on how I plan. And then what you guys will do after that is you will reassess at the end of the quarter and make another 12 week year and then make another 12 week year and then make another 12 week year. And then at the end of 2019, you'll do the whole thing over again. And the thing is, is honestly, it's nothing crazy. If I'm being honest with you guys, like it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's nothing like, honestly. And I guess my, and I'll leave you with one more tip. 
do not do this when you're sitting there with your cell phone and your kids screaming and all this different stuff. Like you need to find 20 minutes alone. You, all you need honestly is 20 to 30 minutes alone with those questions and be honest with yourself. And I always like get crazy because I'll see like my teams coming in and I just see people just not like, I see people that literally just like answered the questions. And I can tell when somebody fills it out that was just like on their phone and like Kelsey wants me to fill out another form and they're just like typing stuff in. So the person that's being super strategic with what they want, and I don't know, and your coach won't know how to help you if you don't tell us what you want. Like one person filled my, our, out on our team and God bless her. She's an amazing person. But all it said was like nothing about anything except become a mom. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to help do that? You know, <laughs> like I can't help with that. So like, I was like, so I even reached out to her. And the thing is, if you guys, if you guys do have teams, I encourage you to do this. Like I reached out to her one-on-one -on -one and I was like, listen, like I want, I want to help you. You know, I want to help you to the point where when you do become a mom, you have the choice in whether or not you need to go back to work. So you tell me a little bit deeper real, real quick, what you want out of this business. And if you don't know the terminology, if you don't know what Emerald means or diamond means, like tell me so I can help you. And I think that's the biggest thing. So that is, that is it. That's what I do every year, every quarter. And in all honesty, guys, it's completely my, my team. It's changed my team, the way that we do things. We're not focused on December, you know, with the beginning of the year, we're focused on March 27th. And I think that's the, the coolest thing is our year always ends after three months and we are hustling to make stuff happen. And to give you guys a heads up, um, just to show you how well this works, um, my quarter three and quarter four plan, I paid off $20,000 of debt. So, and now it was because I had it listed out exactly like this, where I knew what was going where every single week. And that's, you know, that's Dave Ramsey one-on-one -on -one for you. But at the same time, like it's when you were serious about this, I literally looked at it and I calculated, I was like, holy moly, you know, I was like, how did I do that? And it's because I knew what I was doing. And so, yeah, sure. I, I, you know, we went to lead again this year and we, um, we went to lead again this year. We went seven star and all these great things happened. But my biggest accomplishments this year, I bought a house. I planned for that. <laughs> I paid off twenty thousand dollars worth of debt. I planned for that. You know, I did some pretty remarkable things this year, and it was because I knew what I wanted. And I can guarantee you, neither of those things would have happened if it was not if it wasn't in my brain and mapped out perfectly the way that I wanted it to. So, I saw like I have like twenty seven comments, so I'm gonna go through them. Let's see if anybody. And if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question, go ahead. Yeah, feel free. I'm just going through them. Oh, Annalisa said, how do you keep going toward your goals and the little things like no after no after no make you second guess your abilities? You can plan to pay off that week, but your actions are just not successful. So yeah, you. what I would do is I would readjust every week. So that's why, like I was saying, I do a weekly scorecard for myself and I have to be super honest with myself because someday, like today guys, I had a meltdown and my husband was ready to kill me. Like I was, I sat here and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I was like, I'm just so over it. I'm so tired. It's been 365 days of working in this business and I was having a meltdown and he was like, okay, we're going to Target and I felt better. But like we, it was like to the point where, um, you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> it, it is, it's funny because like you guys see all that stuff and you're like, man, Kelsey's got it all together. Like I don't have great weeks. I have, a, I have weeks where I was planning on putting $500 on a credit card and an unexpected bill came and that happens. So what I do is I, on Sundays, I readjust. So by the end of this quarter, this paper is beautiful and white, but at the end of this quarter, there is stuff crossed off where I was supposed to make a hundred dollar payment that week and I moved it down, or I was supposed to send a hundred invites this week and I was like, I only got to 70, so I moved 30 down. That's how I operate this. And I just always reassess every week and I like sit back and I'm like, okay, what do you need to do to get back on track? And that's always the question I ask myself on Sundays. So if you guys aren't in the habit of taking 20, I always say call it take 20 on Sunday, by yourself again, <laughs> not when your kids are around, not when, you know, the, your husband's watching football, like not with the TV on, not with cell phones, 
if you take 20 and sit down and you're like, okay, how did I do last week? What do I need to improve this week? Take out your planner, schedule it in, and you're good to go. Just be honest with yourself. So hopefully that was a good answer to your question. I have a question. Um, Mary Page and I, who's my accountability partner, she's waving. Um, so we just met today and we're starting to talk about some of this. Um, and we were trying to figure out like sort of how to balance setting really big scary goals while also figuring out realistic goals as, mm -hmm. um, you know, like believing in the potential with Beachbody, but knowing from mentors that like it takes some time so you have to stay with it along the way and then kind of the second part to that was truly how to figure out number wise how to reverse engineer those goals like we were still tweaking how to figure that out no that's a really good question how long have you guys been coaching so for me three years as discount and like two months all so in actively working two months yeah okay mary how long have you been coaching a uh, year and a half actively. Okay. So here's my thing. And this is, here's what I want you guys to all understand is that yes, you guys can do whatever the hell you want. You can. I mean, if you want, <laughs> if you want to be an elite coach, you can, but here's my way of helping you an to answer that question is that you need to go and ask somebody who did it, how they did it. That's where I would start as I would reach out and I would get, you know, out of your comfort zone and don't think you're bothering people because you're not. Um, and the reason is, is like, I can't tell my, if my, one of my coach comes to me and they say like, I want to be an elite coach this year and they don't know how to do it. They didn't do it yet. Like they're pushing to do it. So my, my job as their upline coach is to tell them what's going to go into that push. It's to tell them straight up, like, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to get up early. You're going to have to send X amount of invites a week. You're going to have to invite to the business. You're going to have to start running your own coach opportunity calls, things like that. So I think for you is if I would say, start with your brain dump and just like really write out everything that you're wanting and don't do not guys, please do not let that little bug. that's like, that's not realistic get into your ear because I went from, basically an Emerald coach to diamond to a five star elite in one year. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, and I'm being serious by that. So what I would say is write it all out and then reach out to your upline coach, reach out to somebody who's done what you did and say, what, be honest with me, lay it on the table. What do I need to do to make this happen? And if you hear what they say and you don't like that, <laughs> then don't even write it down because it's true. Like, that's how it is. Like, what am I telling my coaches what it's going to take to be an elite coach? Some of them are like, oh. And if they're not willing to set, and that's why I told you at the beginning, if you're not willing to sacrifice for that goal, don't even write it down because I'm 20, I know 2019, you're going to be doing this, this self evaluation from the previous year and you're going to be like, why didn't I achieve it? And your answer is going to end up being because I didn't want it. I didn't want it bad enough. So, Hopefully that's a good answer to your question. I don't know if that made sense, but I would say reach out to the people that have done it and don't think anything is unrealistic. Thank you. Does anybody else have questions? And I'll guys, I'll, like I said, I'll pass on that um, PowerPoint to Dana so you guys can look through it if you need like break things down. Cause I know that I went through like Stephanie's 12 week year really quickly. Um, but, and the fun thing is, is like now my goals are insane, you know, and I don't like to, I was like so scared to share them with you guys. Cause I didn't want like newer coaches, somebody that was there for two months being like, Oh my gosh, like, like mine are crazy. My first goal I think I ever had was to pay for my Shakeology that month, you know? And that was the first thing was helping three people. And then my next one was like hitting Emerald and, and started moving up. And I remember things just like paying off a $200 credit card. And now I literally have on my, my goals for quarter one is to pay off $10,000 of debt. It's to have all of my elite points locked in in three months. It's to help three of my coaches go one star dot one to two star diamond. It's to save eight grand. Like it's, it's gone up so quickly. And it's funny because I look at it and I'm like, shit, I can do this. You know what I mean? Like I, I got this in the back because I have a plan. So I don't know. Just have fun with it. Like goal setting, like this is like, I tell you, I, it's, it's a passion for me. I love doing it. And 
what I get mine done super early because my pat because once you guys all have teams of your own, like my second passion is really digging into my coaches and being like, what do you want? You know, and like really helping them dig into that and getting like how you guys saw Stephanie saying, I now know for my, as a, like her leader, I know how to check in with her every week. So I know what she's supposed to be focusing on and I can figure out what's going on if she's not making it happen. So yeah. Kels, I want to ask you a question that is in the same family, but not exactly what we're talking about. Um, because this is something I find that I feel like comes up quite often. And that is like, I know you're not a mom, so it's a little different for those of us that are. But um, if you feel yourself like on the verge of a burnout, like what is the best tactic for you in terms of like setting boundaries with your business, I guess, so that you can always stay in that like high energy motivated space to be able to continue to push forward towards your goals? Because sometimes I think that's what screws us up is like we hustle so hard and then we hit like a fatigue wall, burnout, stop, start, stop, start, whatever, which is like the opposite of what you need to be doing if you really want to achieve big things. So I'm curious how that works. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a really good question because I think that my team thinks that like I'm superhuman and that's my fault. <laughs> I see Lizzie laughing because like they think that I have my, like I am just like constantly like, blah, 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 blah. and in all honesty, like, what happened to me today, it's funny to like say it out loud, but guys, I was like suffocating in the middle of the day where I was like tired and I just sat down for a second and I physically could not get myself to send a message. And I was staring at my inbox and I was like, for the love of all things, <laughs> if I have to message one more person today, I'm going to lose it. Like I go through that stuff too. Um, and the thing is, is like, I could have avoided that. So that's what I'm saying, like how Dana said that, like how can you make sure that you're taking care of yourself and, and avoiding that? Um, and that's one of my goals in 2019 is to set boundaries. And it is to schedule out my office hours and to know when I am working and when I'm not and to be intentional with my phone time and things like that. But I think the two biggest things that I can offer to you guys on this, it's funny because like I tell my team to do something and then I don't do it. And I'm like in my office for 10 hours a day. Um, Cause you're right. I don't have kids. Like I have no other obligations. So I'm like, I'll just keep working. And I find myself bored. And I'm like, I've like, Zach yells at me. He's like, you have no hobbies. All you do is like your work. It's, and he's right. Um, so that's like, I literally have a goal for 2019 that says like, find a hobby. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do anything. Um, but, um, my thing is, is that you always want to obviously, and you guys have heard this and this is like a broken record. You need to take care of yourself. That's number one. Um, the two, three most important things in your day is your shake, your workout, and your personal development. Um, I don't skip those things ever. Um, and honestly, I think the big thing too is giving yourself grace and saying like, yeah, and sleep, yes. Um, and saying, um, and I don't know, saying it's okay to, to step away. We have to kind of train our brains to do that. The biggest thing in my head is that if I can invite every day, throw up a post, post on social media and do my three things, then I feel really good about my day. Um, everything else can come later. But I think the biggest thing is, is understanding that you don't have to do it all. You can run a very successful business. And most people are like our, a lot of our top coaches in this business work way less than I do, you know? And I always, I always ask that's like my most common question is like, how do you make that much money and like not work? <laughs> and they're like, deleg they delegate and all that stuff. And while I can't do that stuff yet, um, this is like a really long winded answer to the question of just, you have to take care of you, you know, and find the joy in this business every single day. What brought you here in the first place? Because I didn't start Beachbody to work 10 hours a day. I, I started Beachbody to, for freedom and to live the life that I want to live. I need to live. And I always, think, I think the biggest thing too that I was told is that to my followers, if they come to my Instagram story or come to my page, are they seeing me live or are they seeing me working? And what am I putting off to them? And my people don't really see me do much other than work out and randomly dance with Energize in my hand, you know? So I have to, I have to take ownership of that. And I want to paint a picture for them of what's possible. And I don't want people to run the opposite way thinking they can't do what I do because I'm always working. 
So you have to create a balance in it. And that is a huge goal of mine in 2019. So when I find the answer to that question, I will report back to you. But what I tell my coaches is um, the main four things is personal development, workout, shake, and inviting. And as long as you can lay your head down at the end of the day and you feel good about what you did, then you had a good day. And your family comes first. Don't ever put them second to this business. Yes, because then resentment happens. Mm -hmm. I I love I have this. Go ahead. One other thing, and this is pseudo related. Like, I have a really hard time um, realistically understanding like how much time, because my husband asks me all the time, like, how much time are you going to put into it versus like what your goals are? Like, um, how does that relate? And and for me, like. You know, I'm trying to do this part time. I'm a stay at home mom. My kids only go to preschool like half day. So I have a very short amount of time I have to myself, um, except for late at night. So I've been like kind of doing stuff in the morning and then stuff in the evening. And I find like things take a lot longer. Maybe it's just me, but like writing posts, writing content, maybe like thinking about free groups or like just kind of prepping stuff or like it takes a lot longer than I totally realize. Is that something you ever come across? <laughs> Oh girl, I, I'm the queen of getting shit done early. Okay. So I am an automation person. Like I already have my whole quarter planned out for my team. Like everything is scheduled in a calendar for them. Um, they know what's coming. So you can do, um, I would say as much as you can pre plan the better. There are so many apps out there now that allow you to schedule out posts. So on Sundays I actually write out six, seven posts. Um, I might not use them because something might happen in that day that's more like time convenient, but I always write out seven and I am the queen. Like my, my opinion is don't make this harder than it needs to be. Go out with four different shirts with a tripod and a self, like your selfie stick and just take a crap ton of pictures. Like make yourself look nice. Like take pictures in your house whenever you're having a good hair day. Take pictures when you're not having a good hair day and just like have, I, I have a selfie folder on my cell phone. Like I pull from my selfie folder. I'm not going to sit around. Like if I'm like right now, you are not going to see a picture of me, but I will tell you right now, like I have a picture that I'm posting after this call with my back turned to the camera though. But the thing is, is that like, I am just all about planning ahead and I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a mom, but I believe this would work so well for all of you guys that are like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what to say. And what you can do for posting is this trusty color wheel and <laughs> um, pull this out and write down all the things that you're about. So like for me, it's like once out of debt, aspiring mom, dog mom, wife, blah, blah, blah. And what I do is I just go around my wheel and I write a post about one of those things, seven posts. And I'll keep going around my wheel. So every time you come to my page, I can guarantee you guys that you're seeing a post about one of these things. Um, and I can pre-write them because my life is full of stories. I have so many things from my life I can pull from. So I always have stuff on standby for myself for days where I'm uninspired or, you know, my dog poops on the floor and I have nothing to say, you know, or your kid's going crazy. So pre-plan everything. I have, um, I could do a whole other call on this. Um, I only have five challenge group templates and I created them all and I rotate. So I never have to create new challenge group content. Um, I automate my emails, which is through Google Streak. So I'm a plug and play person. So all I really have to do is invite every day. Okay, awesome. That's super helpful. So I would say, and then you can do that. And we do planning. I do a planning Sunday too. So when you're sitting down, you're reevaluating re your week. Tell your husband, be like, hey, give me one hour on Sundays. I'm going to schedule out my content. I'm going to walk around my house with a selfie stick. I'm going to, you know, write out, like tell your team. Like I said, I already, my, my coach and I, we do this, our planning calendars, but we schedule out, we take an hour once a quarter to literally get out and plan out the entire quarter and see what's coming up. Um, and everything's pre -do everything's done for us. So I would just say the quick answer to that is anything that you can get done ahead of time, do it. And then grab the notes, the, the notes section in your cell phone, pull the post out and send it out to the world. Create your hashtags, have them in a separate note. The more that you're like efficient on this stuff, I'm telling you, you're gonna make your life so much easier. Cause you don't really, and then if something does happen in the moment, like you step in dog poop and feel like sharing that with the world, like you can talk about it at that moment. <laughs> you know, that's what Inst Instagram stories are for the real life moment. You know, your posts are just inspiration and get, providing value to your people. 
but the Instagram's like, I don't need to tell them like in the, like, I don't need a selfie with me and my Shakeology because that does nothing, but I can show them making it, me making it on my story. That's a real time thing. So like I said, I could do a whole other call on that, but just make your life easier. We're having you come back. <laughs> <laughs> I am obsessed with the idea of just making five challenge group guides and rotating them like mm -hmm. that. And no one ever remembers. Genius right there. It, it took me a day to make them like it doesn't. And the thing is, is like, if you've been around for a while, you probably already have them done in yeah. your challenge tracker app. They've all saved. So I always go back and just pull from those. Yeah. I love that so much. Just make your life easier guys. Stop making it so much harder every day like I still and I, I say that from me who like only has to invite every single day but still finds a way to spend you know seven hours in her office <laughs> but who knows to make documents for everything you could possibly yeah, I do I do create <laughs> I do create everything and somebody there's a podcast that said like at this point in our business like all we should be doing is helping our leaders grow and creating and it's the truth that's all I want to do is like create stuff and I love it and it's fun for me I love it. Anybody else have any last questions? Kelsey, you can officially do your mic drop. <laughs> well, honestly, guys, I think like, I'll just leave you with this, like be intentional. That's all I'm going to say with 2019, be intentional. That's all I really want to leave you with is that you don't need to work harder. You just need to work smarter. And if you already know at the beginning of the year, everything, like I already know what I need to be doing for the first 12 weeks of my year. And that's like my goal for all of you guys is for you guys to sit down, be clear on what you want and go after it. Because I'm telling you what, if you do not do this, if you're looking at this and you're like, I'm going to do it and you're super inspired and then you end up not doing it because the holidays are going to get in the way, your 2019 will be the exact duplicate of 2018. It will. And you'll be wondering at the end of next year, when I probably come on another call and do this exact same topic, why you're still sitting in the same spot. And that's, that's the biggest thing that I want you guys to just keep in mind is that anybody, nobody's like special in this business. Nobody does this crazy, like no one comes in there like talented at Beachbody. I'm telling you that right now. Like the way, the reason people achieve things in this business is because they are so intentional with what they're doing. And the more intentional you can be, the bigger the vision, the bigger the dream, I promise you guys, you will do it. And remember, last thing I'm just going to say, it's about your life. It's not about this business all the time. Like you have to decide what you want out of your life. And if you've never been asked that question before, it's the, I'm, I'm asking you tonight, what do you want? Because you can have anything. You just have to, you have to have the belief and the desire to go for it. And that's all it takes. Um, I just love the prompt for the questions at first because I think without that feeling it's really hard to have the goals that actually excite you to get to those things so I absolutely love that um thank you so much Kelsey I appreciate it more than you could ever imagine I know I speak for everybody else when I say that too um happy holidays merry christmas, merry christmas. <laughs> um and Thanks, guys we'll see you next week Thanks Kelsey bye guys <laughs>